Hello, welcome everyone, and uh, uh, please introduce yourself, Fabio. Welcome. Hello. Hi, thank you so much, Magda. I'm Fabio Rodriguez. I'm sensei, uh, karate sensei. Uh, I I belong to the Japan Karate Do Ryobukai organization. Uh, it's an international organization, and uh, we have a couple of places here in town. I'm going to be talking about uh, women's self-defense, or uh, it's listed as a street self-defense. But I'm going to touch you some very few basic points. We only have half an hour, so I'm going to get started. Uh, with uh, what uh, cell defense means. If you go and search cell defense uh, in Google, for example, you would say this, the, the defense of one's person through the use of physical force. Okay? So, uh, one moment. That is like a very legal term, you know? The use of... Uh, Defense of one's person through the use of physical force is very like legal, something. But people who teach self defense, you know, try try to teach people not to use physical force, try to avoid or de escalate the situation so they don't even have to get to this point. It's kind of like defensive driving. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't you don't learn how to you don't teach people how to swerve fast. You teach people you teach people how to not to get into a situation where they have to swerve away. From another car fast basically so we're always avoiding de-escalating so we're going to touch on four topics today and maybe four techniques the four topics that we're going to uh, uh, touch today are awareness distance boundaries and communication okay so things that you all heard about but we're going to go a little bit deeper into that for example, we're going to start with awareness. Uh, a lot of people take self-defense classes these days. People are a, a, a lot more aware. There's a lot more information. Everybody's heard about being aware, being a, be aware of your surroundings, be aware of your surroundings. It's very common. A woman these days know, know not to park in a dark place, they, to look in all directions, have their key ready. Whenever they approach their car, look around and even underneath the car. They know all those things, but they don't realize that they being sometimes they become praised before they get out of the car to go into the store, for example. So that happens before people are already checking you out. So you have to be ready from the very beginning. Uh, people are lacing stuff uh, on the handles, so you have to be careful with that. Some a lot of times people get in the car, lock the car, and right away feel safe, and then they start getting their phone for about five minutes, 10 minutes. That, you have to be aware of this too, don't do that. The moment you get in the car, lock, leave, then you're gonna be safe. Because even just being in the car locked while looking at the phone makes you, makes you a target as well. So you have to be a little bit beyond of just approaching the car and look around before getting in the car, you know? Uh, also, when you're walking down the street, obviously, uh, be, become a people watcher, you know, like you're a better watcher, now you're a people watcher. You peel, you look at people in their eyes, look at, uh, study their body language, and don't live in virtual reality. Don't look down the whole time and be in your phone the whole time. Even when you have the headphones, you know, you're, you're losing the sense of hearing. So, you know, don't live in a virtual reality. You know, uh, posture is the number one thing. Good posture is the number one key point in karate. Is the most important thing posture more, uh, more important than learning how to punch how to how to fight because posture first of all is going to make you look confident and alert two very two things that are going to make avoid uh you becoming a target being alert and confident first of all second of all you won't re you don't realize how much more uh periphery uh per per peripheral vision you get or you lose from just doing this. You, you know, you just by looking up, you get a lot more view around you, okay? For example, when you're fighting, you're alert to the person in front of you. You're already engaged in a fight. And if you're looking a little bit down, you might not see arms flating, uh, arms flaring, coming from around you or weapons coming from around you. So you have to look up and go back a little bit and all of a sudden you have a lot uh, 
you can see a lot more. You can see the, the movement of the arms of the opponents, things that you may not see, even just by doing this and this. So good posture, you know, increase your peripheral vision. It's very important because my a rated the body language of people around you. Don't be afraid of looking in, in the eyes because if you shy away, you might become a target. So don't be afraid of engaging and looking at people straight in the eyes. Don't live in virtual reality. reality. Look, be aware of the moment. Okay. Uh, this, number two, distance. Walk away when necessary. Stand at the safest distance possible and, in, and engage when needed. Walk away when... Uh, well, let's put it, let's have an example of walking away when necessary. You know, how you have a little dog, you know, maybe a yappy little dog and you're in the park and you see a big dog coming in the distance. You immediately move away or take the whatever, uh, whatever action you need to take, you know. So you need to do the same thing for yourself. The way, the same way you protect your dog from another dog that's coming is the same thing. Don't be shy of looking someone in the eyes and walking away when they're coming in this direction. It's better to do that. Uh, it's better to be safe than sorry, okay? It depends where you are, but you know, don't be shy about creating distance. Uh, stand at the safest distance, distance possible. When someone approaches you and you start feeling uneasy or in danger, you know, you don't want to give your, your back or shy away. You want to get confront and create distance. Same thing. You want to be able to see the whole, their whole body, all the range of their movements, but you cannot see, you cannot do it by being too close or looking down. So you have to create a safe distance. Okay. Arm length or a little bit more their arm length is the safest so that you can react or move away, hopefully move away. Uh, engage when needed, well, someone's touching you, you can just swap their arm away, or they are hugging you, you need to react, you need to engage. So at one point you have to do something, so that means engage when needed. So it's uh, three distances. What you can do from far away, walking away, someone's yelling at you, someone's saying something to you or looking at you in a, in a very suspicious way, you can walk away. You know, so, uh, there's, a, there's a fight going on, you walk away, right? Uh, stand at the safest, uh, at the safest distance possible. You know, someone's almost an arm length or, you know, getting close. You create distance. Don't be shy about creating distance. You're not going to look weak. This is for your safety. And engage when needed. Someone's, someone's touching you. Now you have to engage. Even if it's just swatting an arm away, that is also engaging, not just not only fighting. Boundaries, this is really important. You have to create boundaries. You have to express disapproval of unwanted behaviors or, or advances towards you. So you have to be, not to be shy about telling people what you want, right? right? For example, don't be shy about calling people out. Men don't be, people don't be, don't like being called out in public. Don't like being called rude, or you know, you can tell someone you're you're doing something inappropriate. Don't be rude. People don't like being called out, right? So this is very important. Express disapproval, right? And create a boundary. For example, someone's putting an arm around you, right? You don't have to say anything. You can just step back move the arm and now you're behind him like you're trying to hug them right so you don't like the arm around you you put the arm around them and push them away you know that's a way to create a boundary without saying a word so you can use your words to say hey don't be rude i don't like that that's inappropriate or hey don't touch me uh there was a, a co-worker of mine we had a a male manager you know and uh, and he was very touchy, you know. <laughs> my friend, he was like, uh, I don't know what was happening, but my the manager was being inappropriate, and he said, oh, he laughs it off, and he says, sorry, 
I'm a little touchy. My friend says, "Ah, oh, it's okay. I'm a li- I'm a little punchy." You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I thought it was a great line, you know. He didn't look mad, he didn't look aggressive, but he let him know what he didn't want. You know, he says, "I don't approve this." And he, you know, that was like a, a very clear message I like that. So create boundaries, social boundaries. Uh, let people know what you expect. Don't be shy about it. This is, for, I said, don't be shy about it, but I'm shy. I'm introvert. What to do? So you have to learn how to communicate what you want. A policeman in the street use words, say, walk three steps towards me, turn around, put your hands behind. They're always telling people exactly what they want them to do. They have to be good communicators. So we have to be two good communicators too. I am shy. I'm an introvert. I'm not good at jabbing with words. So I have to come up with short sentences or words. Practice short, clear, and concise responses that can be used during stressful moments. So I'm not good at arguing. I'm not good at jabbing or uh, words with someone else. So I just say, learn how to say no. Learn how to say no. That's your communicating. Help. You're communicating. You know, step back. Don't touch me. Uh, you know, clear, concise. You know, or just uh, just say yell. Hey, hey. You know, or with a with a finger pointing. Hey, and that's clear, as concise. You didn't have to think about a sentence. You didn't have to think. You just uh, quick little words uh, that can get you out of stressful situations. So the same thing. So no help. Also, what not to say, for example, I don't know if you heard um, not too long ago, there was a rape case of a woman in a fraternity house and uh, there was a mu- loud music happening and she kept saying, uh, stop, don't, stop, don't, right? Well, the lawyers of the, of, of the men, of the attackers uh, said, well, no, she was, she was not saying Stop oh, down. She was I saying, can hear what's coming. She was saying, don't stop. So she was not being clear, and the situation was not being clear. So, you, you know, you have to say, you can't say, don't stop, for example. You have to say, no or help. So you need to practice what you're going to say and how to say it and be clear and concise about it. Because if the, if the message is wrong, it can, it can be used against you. So communication, don't get close, help, I don't want to fight, get off, whatever, just be short. Okay, now we're going to go over a few techniques that you may want to learn. Obviously, you, you know, everything needs to be practiced, you cannot learn karate in, th- in, in half hour. But, you know, I can give you some tips, some physical tips. For example, let's look at, I'm going to put my... Yeah, we can see a little it. bit away. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. Okay, so this is the palm heel strike. I don't know if you can see her, but it's a, she's hitting with a palm heel. You're doing that, okay? So you're striking like that. So this is something you can learn to do very easily. You don't need to learn karate for three years to do this technique correctly, right here to the chin. One move, right? Notice that she's grabbing the hand of the opponent. So this is most effective if you grab and pull at the same time, right? So you can do this, this, direct, and step in. Also, don't do it standing in place. Step in, pull in. If especially they're grabbing you, grab that arm or grab your clothing or the wrist and pull them in. It's going to be more effective. So it has to be moving in, moving in, moving in. So this is something that we can practice. You don't need to have uh, a heavy back to practice that. You can you can practice it against your hand, and you and you'll feel her, and you get a feeling for it. You right away you feel bone against bone, and you get a feeling. Mm-hmm. Also, you're practicing by doing this. You're also practicing bringing someone's head against your hand. So you said that. So it's a double. So you're practicing two things. Okay. If you want to practice on pulling someone towards you, then you close his hand, and pull. And you're practicing pulling and pushing at the same time. So it's a different way to practice this, right? You don't need, 
You can use a heavy bag once you get out of here, but you can also use it against your hand and you'll get a feeling for it, okay? So it's very easy. Also, this is a palm heel strike. Doesn't have to be with one hand. You can help this hand with the other hand like this. So for example, someone's grabbing your neck, your uh, collar. So you push with both hands like that. Much easier, okay? Someone's grabbing your neck. Someone has a how is you like that? You grab and you push them away like that. Someone's on top of you, you push their neck away like that. So it's always a push, but it has to feel like a strike. So one move, move in, move in, move in, move in. So it's a palm heel strike. Very, very important. Very easy. One, two, one, two, or like that. Like that. Two hands, one helping the other, okay? So very easy, everybody can do it. Next is gonna be the front kick. Notice how she's using the instep to hit the groin, okay? So I'm gonna move the camera back a little bit or at least, at the very least, do that so you can see my legs. So like that, like that, okay? A woman want to try to use their uh, instep to hit, okay? In the U.S., women use open-toe shoes three-fourths of the year, okay? Where, you, where I grew up, it's a little bit colder. Women use closed-toe shoes almost all year long. What's the difference? With closed-toe shoes, you can hit with the tip of your, of your shoes. You can hit a chin. You know, the chin hurts because it's bone. So it's a hard, hard surface against bone hurts right away. So you can hit, so you can hit to someone's chin, someone's leg. But if you have open toe shoes, you need with an instep to the groin or with the toes or with the ball of the foot. So it's going to be snap, 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 snap. You don't want to do a soccer, uh, a soccer kick. You need to learn how to snap the front kick. This is called this is called a front kick. You don't want to use a soccer kick because you need to because you want you have to be take a big step and wind up and they see it coming. So you don't want to use a, a soccer kick, which is step and swing. No. You, you have to do this without stepping. Just from where you wherever you are, use a snap. 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 She's grabbing her arm. So if she was grabbing him, you grab him and kick. Same time. Same time. Same time. Kick, snap. Underneath, between the legs, toes, or ball of the foot to the groin. If you have open to a uh, close shoe to the chin, it doesn't have to do it to the face. Just quick. Quick. So this is a front kick, okay? Uh, also, you, you can push to the to the belly too. For example, you can push to the belly a little bit more of a push if you if you can. But low kicks to the groin, quick, 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 quick. Okay, what else do we have here? Okay, this is a elbow strike. Elbow strike. Okay. So there's various ways to do a elbow strike. So I'm gonna tell, uh, I'm gonna discuss how to combine these techniques in just a moment. Elbow strike. So there's a distance, arm length distance, where you can do this technique. Also, the front kick is like an arm length distance. Elbow strikes happen at hugging distance. So you're at a hugging distance. This is what I call. So someone's hugging you or they are touching you shoulder to shoulder is a perfect moment to do an elbow strike. I don't know here if she's doing a, this kind of strike or this kind of strike. It doesn't matter. But she's sticking that elbow between her and, and the opponent. Could be to the face. It doesn't have to be to the face. You can go low, get low, and putting in the sternum solar plexus, ribs, especially if someone's about to hug you, you lower yourself down and put that in their ribs, they can't hug you anymore, okay? 
So elbow strikes, very important, okay? Let's talk about, let's go back to the front kick for a second. The front kick, the front kick, if someone comes closer, closer the distance, it doesn't become a front kick anymore. It becomes a knee kick, okay? So knee kick. So you can practice this also with your hands. See how it feels. See how it feels. So one, two, okay? It's very important to grab someone while you do it. So you can close your hands, your fists tight, and practice this. Practice this. One, two. Don't throw it just one at a time. Throw two or three. One, two, three, okay? Other leg. One, two, three. Switch. One, two, three. Yell as you do it. Be loud. Make sure people around you know that you're in trouble. So always yell. So you can yell like whatever. Choose a, choose a letter. A. Choose letter A. A. Help. Stop. Whatever. So if the person's too close, that front kick becomes a front knee. Okay? Ha a palm, palm heel strike. If the person's too close, it becomes an elbow strike. Okay? Okay. Also, let's work on the base. Someone's going to grab you. You need to lo lower your base. Your center of gravity has to go down immediately. I remember when I had a big chocolate lab. It was my first dog. Big 19-pound dog. I used to try, try to grab him to lift him up to go wash him. If I didn't do it right or I didn't surprise him fast enough, he would sink down to the ground. I wouldn't let me pick him up. Well, this is as you, you need to know how to do this. Okay? The very moment someone tries to grab you, lower your center of gravity, just like my dog used to do. It has to be immediate. Doesn't matter if they grab you from behind, from the front, from the side, lower your center of gravity. So I'm gonna show you with my legs how to do this. Okay, so someone tries to grab you, lower into your gravity. Bam! Someone comes from the from the side, move away from them, lower the center of gravity. Someone comes from behind, and you can hit them at the same time with the elbow, for example. One, okay, open your arms so that they can grab you, or okay, so one, push you with your butt, okay. From the front, step back, get low. From the front, step back, or even better, one leg in front of the other, so that you can load that back leg, for example. Okay, so from the front, one, one leg in front of the other. One, arms up, one leg in front of the other, from the side, away, hands up. From the side, away, hands up, hands up. From behind, get low, hit, get low, hit, get low, hit, and turn around and walk away or engage. So from behind, get low, hit, turn around, engage, okay? All right, okay. So we, lo we looked at, uh, Palm heel strike, a front kick, which can also be a knee kick. We'll look at a elbow strike and the base. Okay, let's look at a, so we can put all of them, all of them together, for example, okay? What you don't wanna do is use one technique and stay with that technique because if it doesn't work, you need to have something else. So if you have these three techniques and use them, combine them, then you're gonna be much better off. So you don't wanna do this and just do one and stop. So what you wanna do is, for example, for example, you wanna do one, two, three, four, okay? Or 
they come from the top, right? Hands on top, so stop. One, quick, and two. So you're doing, kick the groin, hit the face right away. So you're gonna be one, two, three, for example, okay? So it's gonna be, they come at you here, you go one, two, three, okay? Or one, two, one, two. Push the face, grab, knee. Push the face, grab, knee. Push the face, grab, knee. So all of them together, okay? And if you grab knee, now you're a little too close, you can elbow, 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 okay? So you can practice push away, knee, elbow, elbow, elbow. D different kinds of elbows, right? So this could be to the face, this could be to the belly, to the ribs, okay? So let's go ahead and practice some different kinds of elbows, for example, okay? This is the best one, especially a, a bigger guy. You just get low, go to the ribs. So right away, one, to the ribs. Get low to the ribs. So they are, they are grabbing you, all of a sudden they do that. So to the ribs, okay? They come this way, get low. Get low, get low, like that, okay? If they are in front, like that, like that. You can grab their head, bring it towards you, and karate will practice with their hands like this. So hit your own hand to get a feeling for it. Hit your own hand. You can also go out there and, and hit a bag, but believe me, hitting your hand keeps Keeps you thinking what to do with both hands because a lot of people go hit a bag and the other hand is dead. They're not using it. So you want to use both. So both hands, both hands, both hands, other side, both hands, pull and push, pull and push. Okay. Uh, same thing, what she was doing, I think she's pushing away, pushing away. Okay. Someone's going to, this is good, someone's gonna grab you. You can just use the elbow, use the elbow. My wife does that, does that all the time. She learned that, okay? It's just her instinct. Someone tries to grab her, push elbow out. So the elbow cannot be just, doesn't have to be only for, um, for hitting, it can be for pushing out. So pushing out, pushing out, pushing out. Or it's kind of push out. Now we have an opening. Kick, strike. So push out, kick, strike. Push out, kick, strike. So you're having uh, the the pony now is getting is getting this hit here and it hit here. So three things in a row. And if you two to those things in a row, you add the yelling. So you are overwhelming him. Okay. So he went from being surprising you to being overwhelmed, you go, hey, you understand? So, so three things in a row, you can finish and then you can turn around and go. So before I continue, is there any any questions? I think time is almost up. Uh, no, this was excellent. And I wanted to add, I uh, read someplace how you are not supposed to park when you are parking, let's say, in front of a big shopping mall next to a big car, you know, okay. because they it can slide the door open and they can pull you in and kidnap you, mm -hmm. you know, because they said once you are in a car, that's over, you know, like, you know, that's you, you are supposed to fight your down is not to ever get pulled into any car. Never, never, never. You, mm -hmm. you never, ever want to be pulled into a car. Your chances and of of survival go way, 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 way up if you fight, even if you get hurt, than to ever getting into someone's, someone else's car. Yeah. Yes. And then also like women are easy target when they have a long ponytail because they can grab you and hold you by the ponytail. Yes, okay. Yeah, there's all, all kinds of situations. Uh, yeah, I haven't thought about it in a while because I don't have short hair, but yeah, that could be, 
Okay, that, let me let me show you something else. A, a lot of people don't realize how to pull hair. Most people don't know how to pull hair properly, even attackers. So what people do is pull you that much. You know what I mean? So even if that happens to you, you are okay. Because what you're going to do is go with the movement, turn around and push. Okay? If that ever happens to you, don't be afraid. You're being pulled, you turn around and go with the move. Mm -hmm. You get pulled, you turn around, go with the move. Now, if someone knew what they were doing when it comes when it comes to uh, pulling the hair, and most people don't know this, is when you pull the hair, you want to pull the hair all the way down to the ground in one move. And most people don't know that. I, I taught this move to a girl, <laughs> and we were practicing painting in the self-defense class, and I have a friend with hair shorter than me, and he's twice my size. And she grabbed him from the little bit bitty hair and and pulled him backwards all the way down to the ground in one move. The poor guy didn't know it was coming. You know, he's twice my size. He just went down, boom. But most people don't do that. But most people grab the hair and the other person grab the hair and they start doing this. So you can also use that for your own protection. Is grab even if it's little hair, and pull all the way to the to the ground in one swift move. Bam. What do you think is going to happen? That person is going to hit the ground immediately. Okay, but if you, if they pull your hair just a little bit, you can re-engage. You go with a move, look, and hit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and uh, so I, I saw saw some place like. Uh, like when 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 somebody holds you in a, like mm -hmm. this, how you are supposed to turn sideways and kind of wiggle uh -huh. out of it? Oh yes, there's all there's all kinds. Of, uh, you know, the bear hug is very tricky. The the bear hug or the choke from behind, it's yeah. very tricky. It's, it uh you know it requires a lot of explanation. Uh, what you want to do is try to as much as possible. What I said about lowering your 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 body weight, it helps. But when you're talking about wiggling, what you want to do is wiggle your hip. Like you, you can move your shoulders, move your arms, but it's more important if you start wiggling your hip. Because if you move your hip, you can direct your body in a different direction, yeah, for example. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah. For example, I can, my shoulders alone are not strong enough, but if I move that, my hip, then my shoulders help me get into a completely different position. Uh -huh, uh -huh, so what you yeah. want to wiggle is your hip out of position. Yeah, and that, yeah, around. That, exactly. That makes moving, sense. Uh, moving arms along is not is not strong enough. You need to move, move your hips so that your shoulders get out of place. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's the easiest way to wiggle is move your hip. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, that totally makes sense. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. I have comments here. I learned a lot today. Thank you very much. You did a great job. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. And, yeah, feel uh, free to contact me uh, yeah. or contact uh, Magdank if you want. And where do you tell us where do you teach your classes or where do? You... Uh, uh, right now, I have a small group that we we get together twice a week in a uh, Kansas City Christian School. Is that uh, we use that their facility twice a week, Thursday night and uh, Saturday morning. So, but where is the uh, address we, or anything? Is a uh, seventy and uh. It's in 79 and row. Okay. 79, 79 and row. And Kansas row. City Christian. Yes. All right. All uh -huh. right. Okay. Feel well, free to you contact me through Magda. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you in your Thank restaurant. Thank you so much for having me. Take care. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.